Hello. I think we're good. Yep. So here's an interesting thing. Um, I thought that to boot macOS under mini, I would, well, under mini, um, from mini, chain load, to chain load into macOS from mini, and that I'd have to write more code um, to, like, uh, load the kernel. As I thought it was missing some, like, relocation support and stuff like that. Oh, there's an echo? Oh, I think I have an extra connection that is dumb somewhere here. Probably. Uh, I hate how this likes to lose the position and it's impossible to see. I think, uh, no, that's in one way. Oh, that? Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, so yeah, I thought I would need to write some extra code to boot Mac OS kernels um, with uh, Mini, but I had been fixing chainload.py to do some things that it wasn't doing that it uh, that I, that were necessary. And uh, and then the other day, uh, I'm like, well, let's just see what happens. And uh, the answer is that it works, or at least it starts to work. So <laughs> it uh, it fails later. Um, but as you will see in a second, I do in fact get the uh, macOS kernel doing something. It doesn't get to the desktop, but uh, clearly it starts booting. So uh, yeah, that part works. This is not the hypervisor, that's uh, bare metal. Uh, actually, I'm gonna try with one CPU. See if that makes it any better. Also, I finally flashed the version of Mini that like has USB support, so I don't have to use the serial port anymore. Uh, which also means I can do that. This is also, by the way, like an ancient uh, Mac OS 11.2 beta to something version. So, oh, it might actually be working now. No, it crashed, but it did more. So let's see what happened actually. Um, seems like one CPU works better. Uh, what was the serial thing? I used to have a the yeah serial three. Let me use all these options again. It should help. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, you're right. I didn't update the title of the stream. Let me fix that. Thankfully, I can fix that in real time. Five oh eight. Fixed. So, okay, let's try it this way. See what happens. Uh, I'll probably make this a bit smaller. This is something serial that shouldn't really need the console much more. Yeah, I'll get it on serial now. It's easier to read. Yeah, okay, so there's something broken with multi core, but. Uh, it got pretty far. What panicked here? Thunderbolt IP. Oh, is it because I disabled one of the USB things? Could be. Let's see. Oh wait, hold on. Booting from the live FS of Oh, it's the sealed volume thing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so it's a problem with my macOS install. Uh otherwise it works. So um also, there's an LSC bus error, apparently, but then the, the actual panic is the, the live FS thing. Yes, yeah, so I need to update macOS to fix that. Uh, actually, probably reinstall macOS, and I need to update macOS um, anyway, but it kind of takes a while, so I don't know if I want to do that now while I write some code. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Uh... Do I want to see if I can, I guess it's, let's leave that for tomorrow. I'm going to, because I don't think I'm going to get this far under the hypervisor today. I only have a few hours to get some dinner later. So 
I'm going to leave it like this for now. And then tonight I will update Mac OS, fix the uh, sealed volume story. And, uh, and then tomorrow I can probably try this again and have a chance at uh, getting to the desktop. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't know why the multi-CPU thing doesn't work, though. That's kind of weird. Uh, seems to be some issue with uh, with using multiple CPUs. But we're going to virtualize the CPU boot up anyway with the hypervisors, so uh, we'll find out. Um, so again, this is bare metal right now. This is not booting under the hypervisor. It just proves that my code for loading kernels is good enough to load Mac OS, not just like mini and other stuff. So now under the hypervisor, I know nothing works, um, but it just hangs almost certainly because it tries to use features that don't work um, because they're not enabled from the hypervisor. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is, um, well, first of all, I'm not going to virtualize serial because that's something I did want to fix later, um, a proper serial emulation. But since I'm not even using a serial port right now, I can afford to not do that. So uh, let's turn off serial virtualization. And then what I'm going to do is in uh, here in hypervisor init, there's a bit. Uh, so right now the hypervisor sets up basic HCRL2 stuff. And what I'm going to do is, um, so if you dot msr self do dot mrs HCRL2. And there's a bit here that should catch all implementation defined uh, things. I don't know if it'll do instructions. I know it'll do registers. Um, I forgot what bit that was. Is that way CR? Oh, TACR definitely needs to be on. Uh, I'll see about those. So that's, I mean, we can actually let it use ACTR, but I want to. I want to get notified about these for now. We can turn this off later. That's the cool thing, as you'll see when I boot the hypervisor is, if I decide I don't want any of these traps, I can just turn them off later. So, uh, but first, uh, we did have, uh, 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 oh yeah, we're not using those defines here yet. So, SCR121. Yeah, I should just define um, these bits here, but it's um, it's too many of them right now. So just do it as a quick hack like this. Yes, TIDCP, that's what it was, bit 20. Uh, someone's asking about the kernel slide thing and on Mako. Mako is the file format that like Mako is uses for executables and stuff. So you can just Google that and you'll find how it works. But it's just an executable format like any other. Um, kernel slide thing, just Google um, ASLR and especially KASLR. Uh, kernel slide just means how like a shift in memory where the kernel is. It's basically like a random offset in memory so that the idea is that um, you can't guess where different parts of the kernel are because it's, it's, the position is slightly randomized. And uh, Apple calls that the kernel slide. Linux does the same thing, by the way, internally. But uh, like uh, Apple does it in the bootloader. Linux does it itself. So we don't care about that for booting Linux. But uh, but Mac OS is, and Mini itself, because it boots like as if it were Mac OS. Uh, I'm not going to say have to deal with that, but like... I have to work together with that. Okay, 
So uh, the first thing I need to do here also is add support for setting the arguments like I did for chain loads. So basically this code right here, setting up boot args. Yeah, and then uh, actually this should really just be a, uh, a function here. I think I do set self dot tba. No, I don't actually. I need. I should do that at the top. Init. And then. I shouldn't just use self tba there. So that should be fine. And then the trick here is don't need that. Self TVA video display boot args to boot args. Self TVA command line boot args. Cool. And then in the uh, run guest, just kind of copy and paste this stuff. Oh, they call it underscore nor underscore no underscore okay so that shouldn't allow me to pass arguments here uh run guest uh, that was the old kernel cache so let's do the proper one and pass the same boot arguments um i don't think i'm gonna get any video and uh, then here in hv.py, uh, yeah, we're disabling everything. So now I almost certainly should get a trap as soon as I boot. You know, half of the time it spent there was like Python calculating the checksum. I should optimize that code. Oh, uh, huh? Did I forget that? FB, not PY. Uh, missed something there. It was in a previous commit. I messed up something. Uh, oh, did I forget to define those? Oh, I forgot to define them. Dumb. Uh, yeah, pfp uh, uh, init d00. Yeah, sorry about that. I added a thing to clear the frame buffer and, uh, ooh, and forgot to define it. Um, mm -mm -mm, proxy.h. Yeah, I need these defines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's try that again. Ooh. Oh, uh, because that's not... Hmm? No, it should... Oh, no, yeah, that isn't supported. I do need to chain load the new version. Uh, just chain load a regular mini. Ooh, interesting. Oh, now it works. Okay. Now let's try running the guest. I think there is an auto incrementing enum type. Um, and I actually want to switch these to a proper enum type. Um, uh, 
Uh, automatic values, yeah, there's this thing. There's this auto thing. But you still have to write auto, which is a bit uh, annoying. Uh, but it doesn't continue where it left off, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, ooh, bug. I think that was uppercase OP. So I'm going to have to chain load that C to clear that. And you know what? In run guest, uh, I can probably do... No, wait, that's not going to work. Uh... Nah, uh, it's it's gonna crash in the exceptions and then nah, I'll deal with that later. Um, but for now, do that. And where was I in proxy utils? That's a typo in here somewhere. Uh, op uppercase o. Uh, why do I restore the logo? Yeah, because uh, once we boot without the text, it's gonna do the progress bar thing, and it would seem very silly to. Um, have the macOS progress bar under the SIQ Linux logo. There we go. Um, I added that uh, last night. So, let's see. It also makes it easier to see what, you know, if, if something's going on with the frame buffer or not, or if, if uh, many are reinitialized properly or not. Uh, cool. So what is this? S three six fifteen one zero. It's probably the one that uh, Sven just mentioned. Refresh. Uh. Yeah, SPR config EL1. So it's trying to enable the SPR stuff. So we're just going to skip that. And now it's trying to set the config. We're still going to skip that. And then it's trying to disable it. We're going to skip that. Uh, now it's doing 3, 6, 15, 15, 12, 4. I really should add something to fix these in the disassemblies. Actually, I think I can do that. I don't want to merge uh, Sven's PR, but I, I asked for some cleanups. So maybe ne once we merge that, I'll fix that. Um, this, is prob this is reading from what now? Twelve four. Oh, I wonder what that is. Hold on. Arm system registers. Oh, that's APSTS. Ah, um, yeah, pointer authentication stuff. That is waiting for um the flag to be valid and um actually we can just kind of read that uh yeah that is set to one so i do have a context thing here don't i yes yeah, it's at reg zero let's just set it to one and skip the instruction and now it's reading for three four fifteen zero four. That's APCTL, and it's going to set some stuff. Yeah, we can skip all that. These are the these are going to be like the uh, chicken bits and things. Three four fifteen zero four. Yeah, same thing. Three four fifteen one zero.
41510. Yeah, kernel keys. This is all current, like uh, all that stuff. So honestly, you, this stuff we're just going to enable because there's no reason not to let it do a pointer authentication in the guest. Um, but I'm really curious how much it's going to do before actually printing something over serial. So let's skip that um, pointer auth thing. And then it does 301541. Uh, yeah, now the, this is the uh, HID register nonsense. So I was going to ton of that. Um, skip that. Skip that. Skip, yeah. 301550. Yeah, skip that. 1510.1, yeah, skip that. 10.1, yeah, skip those. I know this is all uh, chicken bit nonsense. 15.1.2, yeah. That's uh, ehit 20, yeah, skip that. 5.0. Yeah, another hid. Three zero fifteen. Yeah, three four fifteen. Sorry, three four fifteen five zero is what? Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, that was the core ID thing. Yeah, but it's written with four. That's interesting. Anyway, we're still skipping that. And then three four fifteen one four. Well, that that I don't know what it is. Uh, three, four, fifteen, one, four is not guarded execution stuff. Oh, interesting. I wonder what this is. Um, I like guess written with one hundred. I'm gonna make a note of some like things that I don't know. Uh, cool. Let's put that one there. Skip that. Three five fifteen five zero. Yes, that's reading from. Uh... Yeah, that one. We don't know what that is. Skip. Three five fifteen five zero. Uh, yeah, it's clearing some bits there. And then three four fifteen zero four. Uh, IPCTL. Yeah, and it reads that. And then three fifteen zero four. Yeah, it's testing for something there. ACTLR, yeah, we're trapping those, as we said. Skip that. And then it sets something there. 3, 4, 15, 10, 6. So there's a lot of stuff here that we're just going to end up turning on um, because we're going to need it. But I wonder how, just how... Uh, oh, interesting, I wonder what that is. It's trying to... Read it. Oh, no, it's 10, 6, 8. I wonder what that is. Almost looks like a counter of sorts. Um, yeah, that, that's obviously a, it's obviously a timer. So that should probably pass through. All right, let's see what happens if I just don't care. <laughs> um, Three two fifteen zero zero. Oh, the PMC. Yeah, it's initializing PMCs and stuff. Let's skip all that. Three one fifteen one. I'm pretty sure this is all PMC stuff. Three one fifteen one zero. Yeah, PMCR. Three one fifteen zero zero. Yeah, PMCRs. And then it stopped. That's interesting. Uh, anything on the video? Nope. Okay, so if we skip everything, it just dies. Um, but that's also not terribly surprising because uh, maybe some pointer off things are involved there. Um, so. Let's kill that. And I'm going to write some code to actually um, 
emulate all those by just passing them through and then see how far we get. Uh, and I can do that in Python. So here, h3.py, the exception handling is handled exception. And basically, instead of printing everything, So if basically the same thing as that, it's basically going to be just copy and pasting this what we're actually doing. And then this is MSR. So basically value equals, and this is, oh, this is backwards by the way. Uh, MSR should be like that. So, yep. Value, let's just copy and paste that. Sorry. Well, something like that. Why is that doubled? And in principle, we just handle it everything until it crashes at least. So let's see what happens if we just uh, pass through every single implementation defined thing. Though I bet I know why it crashed though. It possibly is the um, a guarded execution instruction thing. Uh, so actually in, in here, there was also the HACR yield two and everything but bit 20 is actually kind of something I want to support there. So, uh, I know that some of the guarded execution stuff was, uh, data H a was it? Yeah. This thing. So for example, Three six fifteen one zero. Yeah, this for example, these bits, and then three six fifteen one two, one five one six are probably in here. So other than bit twenty here, I'm gonna set. Actually, I'm gonna set all the lower bits from nineteen down to zero just to see what happens. Um, what happened here? HP the py.
Uh, so it should be one, two, three, four, five. Eps. And let's see how far we get with this. How do I end up with the Yesahi Linux logo? It got stuck on the first emulation. That's not right. Oh, wait, that's going to break. Yeah, that's going to break um, everything because I'm doing it. Yeah, that's not that's not a good idea. Uh, that's interesting that that killed. Uh... Yeah, so basically if that one we don't want to do. <laughs> I'll, I wanna I wanna give names to these later, but uh, do I have the logs of what it did there? Yeah, let's let's turn most of those off in the beginning. Three six fifteen fifteen one zero, and then it does the one six and one zero again. Yeah. Yep, wrong button. One five one six. There's going to be more stuff anyway. Um, yeah, these are going to be fun when we get to those and the G enter stuff. No, something's weird here. It did go skip. Oh, sorry, but I'm not skipping the instruction. Am I? Yeah, sorry. Uh, that would help. But it still should not be... It still shouldn't be actually crashing. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, because I'm not writing this. I'm, yeah, I'm dumb. <laughs> Uh, hold on. Um, what I want to do actually is not handle the exception. Uh, let's call this one. And actually, I only want to do this for sync anyway. So
yeah, basically, um, if uh, code equals Was it info or code? <laughs> Sync, yeah. Um, Okay, let's do it like this. Uh, not handle exception. We'll do this as yeah. Something like that. The right mem is to send the context back to the hypervisor, the registers and stuff like that. Uh, exiting hypervisor? Why? <laughs> oh, then? Oh, not exit guest, sorry. I need a handled. I'm dumb. Ooh, almost. 63 is not a valid year, sorry, you see. That is interesting. We got a lot of pass and skip, so that's good. And now what? Actually, you know what? Let's uh, do accept. Uh, what was it print type that? What was the, the print TV? Yeah. Uh, print exception. E type value TV. Yeah. The print exe. Yeah, that. So at least we get a shell when this happens. Uh, Okay. Uh, 
Is this implementation defined at ESR, EC? Because that'd be funny. Sixty-three looks very implementation defined to me. Uh, ooh, yeah, that looks that looks uh, that looks very sketchy. That looks very sketchy. Is this a custom Apple exception? Ooh. Maybe it's one of those custom Apple instructions that triggers this. Um, and it might be because I set these bits in HACR. I would, uh, I, I bet that's what's going on here is I'm trapping on a, uh, let's just run it again, see what happens. Now that I have the exception handling. Uh, no, something went wrong there. Something went wrong there. Hold on. Oh, right, yeah, the reason why I'm getting Yasaki Linux logo is because I'm using uh, chain load C and that doesn't do the proper shutdown. Okay, yeah, that didn't... Uh... Oh, it's in print exception where it's dying. That's why. It, it dies once and then it dies again in print exception. Ah, that's annoying. Um, but I got some of it. Uh, okay. Um, is there a way to get NT num to not do that? Hmm, maybe no way of doing that. <laughs> Time period. Yeah, I think there's no way of doing that. Okay, that stinks of uh, stinks of Apple, so let's just add that. Actually, you know what? Chainload needs that uh, FB shutdown thing, but uh, I'll add it later.
Is it a missing thing? Uh, yeah, actually, there is. No, it just crashed. I think it doesn't like... I think it doesn't like, um... Non-reboot reloads. Like, something... Something doesn't work when I try to uh, run macOS twice without rebooting in between. And also, if I don't use SC the first time, then uh, I'll get the Apple logo properly. Look at the code. It just returns none. Okay. A I D R. Why did that trap? Interesting. So maybe when you use the H A C R bits. Wait, A I D R? That's interesting. Isn't that standard? Oh, no, it is auxiliary. Yeah. Interesting. Let's just give it... Okay, and then it still dies. Interesting thing is that this uh, syndrome thing is totally different for implementation defined registers. So for the uh, for this exception, so that's there's some bit that does that. That's interesting. I gotta make a note of that to do it later. Um, but yeah, it's still dying, unfortunately. And nothing on serial. Actually, let me just do this. Uh, well, let's see if I just say that if ISS, Then we do that, and I can probably just get the instruction um, from proxy utils. to basically a short version of this.
That's not self CTX ALR. It's just CTX. It's, are you calling? Oh, I'm calling it self CTX. Yeah, but I still want to pass that through. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, pass is just passing through. Um, and to be honest, uh, a bunch of these should probably be in skip anyway. Like, what is this actually? Is this a, di a dying one? Actually, I, do I print pass before or after doing the thing? Uh, hold on. Yeah, it's after the thing, right? So. Um, actually, oh, that's what they're saying. It might, yeah, it might be dying. It's possible it's dying in the MSR. And then here, the same thing. Um, Let's do it like this. Because we might just be dying setting the register. That's totally possible. The F and the F string, where, which one? And here, you're right, yeah, missed that. Uh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. Those are the last ones. Which ones? I think these are fine. That's three five fifteen four zero. Ah, uh, yeah. Honestly, this this should also go away. This is gonna screw things up, isn't it? Uh, this is Apple ACC CFG. Some of them can be read only, but definitely don't want writes. Um, if n can skip four, uh, yeah, so that and sick override, I definitely also don't want it to be messing with three five fifteen five zero. An ACC override five fifteen six zero. Probably the HID bits really shouldn't be touched either, uh, which I think I'm in here. Three zero fifteen zero zero. Might not even gotten there yet. We got some of them through, yeah. That's APCTL.
The other issue is that I am accessing the EL um, one registers, which are actually the EL two registers, in the context of the VM. So to actually emulate some of these, there will be EL one two registers, which are the ones I need to use. Uh, and I should write a thing to enumerate all those at some point, because I know there's a bunch. Like the guard execution ones have that. But well, anyway, let's see what happens for now. It's just all kind of yellow anyway.
Oh, okay. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I need to import struct there. Hmm. Um, well, I can deal with it anyway. Let's just do that. Ah, okay, so that is indeed... I oh, know that is skipping, and it's fine. Uh, so it is dying somewhere. We don't know where. Interesting, and nothing on serial either. I wonder if it's one of those uh, undefined instructions. I want to know if those trap with those HACR bits, actually. So let's do a test for that manually. I can't print all the instructions while it runs because I need single stepping for that, which is supported in the hardware, but that's a, a separate feature set that I'm not using right now. Um, but yeah, single stepping would be nice to have, and I'll probably add that at some point, uh, but not right now unless I really need to. I will have debugging later though, so. Uh, so let's chain load that first uh, and then do a little experiment with the shell. Uh, oh, um, yeah, sorry, I need DWC for that. So So if I just run that that should be G enter and I get an undefined on that. Twenty yield two yield two, yeah. And um uh, I think you typoed that twenty fourteen twenty and twenty fourteen zero zero, I think it was. Uh, where is that article? <laughs> Here. Oh, 400. Yeah, so those are unknown instructions taken from VL2H. And if I call from VL1, EL1 exception, yeah. So those are happening in EL1. And if I do uh, let's try to trap everything. No. Okay, yeah, so that's not gonna work, is it? That's kind of annoying. I really want to trap these. Uh-huh. This is going to be really annoying. You see. Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. See, I was thinking that I can trap these exceptions 
by oh no wait no it doesn't work uh I mean, the thing is, I need to somehow in. Uh, yeah, I I need to somehow trap this stuff from eel one. I mean, there's got to be some stupid bit that disables this and and makes it trap probably, but uh, we don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, which is rather annoying. No, a trap means that when the guest tries to do something, the hypervisor runs instead. The problem is that these instructions have to be enabled to work, and I want to be able to emulate them. But the way ARM works is that if you run an undefined instruction in the guest, the guest itself gets an undefined instruction exception, not the, the hypervisor. And I want that to forward to the hypervisor, which is what I'm doing for this uh, experiment thing here, right? Uh, but... Uh, but I don't think there's anything in the architectural definitions that will do that. Because, uh, as you know, it's not like uh, it's not like ARM defined. Like, there's probably some bit that does this somewhere. I just have no idea where. I would expect it to be in HACR EO0, but I just said that all once and it still didn't help, so. Um, I think the Mac OS exception handlers might just be jumps. And if they are, I can probably fairly easily emulate them. But is that going to change? No, it shouldn't really change during... It shouldn't really change during execution, so I can probably get away with just doing that. Um, so there's the fine-grained uh, stuff also. I mean, it, it basically won TGE or something like that, but this cha this changes a million things. So this is not actually um, this breaks EL one basically. So um, if only I read that, that bit did only what the name says, <laughs> that'd be very convenient. Uh, cache maintenance. Yeah. If only this actually worked. I mean, I can probably enable guarded execution in mini anyway, eventually, but... We'll probably figure out things uh, some bit to fix this at some point. But right now, uh, it's more useful to be able to get these exceptions anyway. 
So let's see if I can do something like that. Let me look at... Now you can travel a lot of random things, it's interesting. Yeah, I could just replace the instructions in kernel text, but ah, oh, that is horrible. Uh, ah, <laughs> yeah, I could do that. Oh man, that kind of that is kind of horrible, isn't it? Um, this is fine grain instruction trap. I don't think there's anything here. Nah. And this is like the debug stuff. Okay, let me do a quick search on the find. No. No. The hypervisor needs to know when the guest has an invalid instruction because they I'm emu I want to emulate those instructions. They're invalid because they're disabled. Ah. How many bits do I get in HVC to, to tell me what instruction it was? You get from bit 20 to bit 5. So basically, 0 is, uh, is it 20? That's what it was. 20 or 1 to 20 or 100. Yeah, so for non register instructions, that's good enough. For register ones, it isn't. 20, 1, 4, but I can, I think all of them are in 20 something something, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they're on 20, it's 21 for, it's, it's 20 to 21 something. So um, I need, it, it is a 16 bit immediate, so that's enough. I can just shift it left by five bits. And that'll be more than enough. Oh, that is terrible. Uh, but I guess there's no other way right now, isn't there?
We have the size already. Okay. Also, this is going to be slow as hell. It's text exec, I guess. Oh, pre-link text or text exec, actually? Probably both. Probably everything in text. Yeah, okay. It's like main. Okay. Uh... Also, like, that array thing in Python is always... Um... Bugs me because this is like um, you can't change the endianness. So I can use this, but it won't work in big endian hosts. But it's probably faster. So let's do it like that. Uh, I hate this. <laughs> Actually, if I could use something like, yeah, I can, you know, instead of scanning in Python, I probably should just do dot index and that'll be faster than that. Uh... Actually, uh, no, I can I can cheat actually. I can use shorts and then look for that only. And that's gonna be the high bits. So if index and three, I want to look at the low bits only. So if index and three does not equal uh two, continue. Hopefully not too many false hits there. Um can I whoa sorry? Can I look for? Oh, that's gonna be an O and squared, isn't it? Ugh. Oh, this is annoying. Uh, output. Okay, let's do it like that. Output that. Well, index A index is a twenty and three is zero. Continue, not continue. Uh... Why is there no start position thing here? I hate it. Okay.
Okay, so let's do block equals a to the index. Everything index plus two. It's plus one, sorry. Um, and also, this is not the address. These are, uh, yeah, so the, these are, um, I think the kind of one does not equal one, so we need to look at the, yeah, the second one of everyone. So block A, index A, look after that. And then um, just put that in and continue. Otherwise, I sure hope I don't get 2020. That'd be silly. Um, Yeah, so then we do block. This does support that stuff, right? Hopefully. Hold on. Let me just double check that this does the right thing. Uh, all right. a big array. Oh, that uh, is going to suck to print, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's the printing. Um, okay, you, you do get a subarray at least. Uh, cool. like this equals uh, one then the instruction is in the block uh, oh, this is called the opcode and then block index so what I need is HVC which is um, D4 Zero 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 two five bits up, and then uh, that should be something like that. Might not be horribly slow. Something like that, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So hydrogen, uh, the entire EO1 vector table is what I was thinking of. But the problem with that is that that vector table is executing um, with virtual memory enabled in EL1. So now I have to deal with EL1 virtual memory addresses. So I could either do that dynamically by patching it anytime it is set by EL1. Uh, but then I need to figure out, like, you know, I'm inserting a hypervisor uh, call instructions. So what instruction am I replacing? And then calling that. Um, and it also means a lot more hypervisor breaks because it'll get called for every random thing, um, including, you know, like uh, all page faults and the guests and stuff. Um, so, and if, and for sending it to a new address instead of the one set up by Mac OS, then the issue is that that needs to be mapped so it depends on the page tables for macOS, uh, which I 
don't directly control. So I mean, I'm sure I could find some place to put it and make it work. Um, but it's like it, it, none of these are, you know, a perfect solution, basically. So let's try this way. Um, but yeah, my original idea was just rewriting vbar equal one. It's just that that's also not entirely obvious how to do correctly. So let's see if this thing works. That did not work. Also, that doesn't look right. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, um, that's not what I want. Okay, I guess we'll do it like this. But that doesn't look right. That's too many of that, which isn't even... No, something is wrong here. And then also I messed this up. Uh, what I actually want to do here is not data to bytes. It's... Um, and it would just be two bytes. And done, return that. Oh, also, this is messed up because um, that's not right because of the um, there's going to be um, an offset issue. Yeah, no, this isn't correct. Um, Actually, just plus IDX, right? Okay, that's more like it, but not quite. That's a lot of stuff. Are there really that much? That many? Uh... Uh, P times two, P minus one times two, sorry. Ugh. That doesn't quite look right. Yeah, but the thing is like, that's disabling the MMU, the problem is is the actual exceptions, right? So the I mean, I don't need to do anything other than have the vector table mapped because I can just run a hypercall and that's it and there's nothing more to do. So I don't care about um the actual code running. Uh this is already what I do for mini, by the way, when those experiments running uh, code in EL1 work like that. I set an EL1 vector table that just hypercalls back into EL2. But uh yeah, the issue is I need the table to be mapped at least. So um what am I? This doesn't look right. There's no way there's all this junk in in that text section. Is there? Hold on, let me look at the file. Uh, that one.
don't know what the offsets there are, but uh, also I missed a thing there. Let me print the file offset. Uh, that's not right. If I file off this PMS, huh? Off. Split off. Wait, what is that? Text. That doesn't look right. Four six four. No, those are the headers and stuff. I don't need that. Also, that's wrong. That's not the right alignment. 20, zero, zero. I'm like off by something there. Oh, wait, hold on. Ah, you know, yes, and plus one. That makes more sense. Still getting lots of false positives, I think. Uh, let's see. 430. That's still not right. No, because this is uh, in in terms of shorts. Yeah, it is for because of this because this is a shorts array. Or if you prefer, um, which actually makes sense, and then it would be uh, p minus two. Wait, hold on. Block A IDX plus minus it minus one? Should be minus one, right? Yeah. Wait, no, plus no plus one, sorry, because it goes to the yeah. Uh I think I'm just making a lot of dumb mistakes here. Four thirty no, something's weird here. That is not correct. So they cut this after the instruction, um, that's okay. I said, oh, it's actually P minus uh, four here. That's why.
Because speech should be the end of the instruction, so. Still 4 to E. No, it's still wrong though. 4 to E was, is not a line, so why is it printing? P and 3 equals 2, and then it's P minus 4, so Y. Oh, because this is the end, sorry. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I think it's 0 because I'm already adding the end, okay. Okay, this makes a lot more sense now. Uh, getting there, okay, okay, okay. Nothing in text, and then pre-link text. Um, these are interesting. 13, 1, 3, 3, 6, 4. Uh, I w did have a D binary. I can just do this real ugly. Mm. Kernel tests. Yeah. So eleven four of zero. Yeah, that is definitely <laughs> but that's not an instruction though. Definitely. Yeah, that's the issue, right? Is there's there's stuff in text that is not code. What is this anyway? Yeah, I don't know what most of this is, but then starting here, this is probably real code. E this looks like AVX to me. Yeah. Or not, actually. Maybe not. Maybe this is uh, a table. I'm not sure. Is it just tech 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 what I need? Still though, this is weird. Uh, maybe, but let me find out where exactly the instructions to the patch are, because I'm a bit confused as to where we are. Oh, okay, those look real. Those look real right now. Okay, so I think this needs to go in tech tech sec. I don't think that pre-link exec thing is not looking like, uh, like code. Yeah, no, that's not code. A text exec though. Let's see here, starting here, this this is code. Yeah, see that's code. Um, but this probably isn't code. Yeah. No, it is code. Interesting. But this isn't code. So it's like there's a bunch of stuff at the beginning of Tech Tech Seg. And then it gets to, like, that's the first one probably. What is that? E93? Oh, uncompressed memory page. Yeah. Then I kind of extend the compressed one too around there. That's interesting that I didn't see it. E93? Yeah, so for now, let's do this only in if sec name does not equal text x ec, return. And 
This probably also isn't code, right? Yeah, no, that's something. What is 1080? AMX. And those are probably part of save restore code or something like that. 1080, I'm not convinced this is the best uh, approach at this point, as I thought. If I if I only had code in here, this would work. But it seems there's data in the text section, and I might go back to the vectors idea. Um, but maybe for now, I can just cheat. So for now, let's just cheat and say. Uh, that no. oh uh why is that so slow though those were super slow. It should be very fast to do those searches. Oh, the cutting. Yeah, so I, th I was hoping that would be fast. It isn't. So there's still an, an O and squared internal to the uh, to the whole thing. That's quite sad. Well, whatever, it'll work for now. It's just slow. That is very slow. This is very slow. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going to end up switching to the uh, V-bar hook idea. Hmm? A equals block equals. No, the time the, the problem is here. the The problem is that this is not like sharing memory or anything as I was hoping it might. Oh, that's very slow right now. What is it doing? It's just staying forever. Yeah, it's just doing that. Uh, why did you not have a search starting from a point? <sighs> okay, so hold on. Let's do it a different way. Um, bytes. If I can just search for bytes and ignore the non-matching ones, that's going to make more sense. And I think, hopefully, bytes might actually have a... Uh, 
But it's fine. Yes, yeah, start in. Okay. Um, yeah, that's going to make more sense. So we're not going to use the array thing. We just search for data and then append the output. That's it. Uh, P off equals. Well, actually, no, what we're going to do, since it makes a lot more sense, is use both. And that way, this is a lot easier. Turn it into an array, then search in the original. Well, uh, p equals zero. Well, p equals uh, data dot find um, search for twenty zero zero starting at p does not equal minus one if uh, p is not and uh, three does not equal two, continue. And then just do a uh, yeah, that makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? This makes a lot more sense. I think that's going to make a lot more sense. That's still slow. Surprisingly slow. Oh, did I forget to increment something? Ah, yeah. It's infinite looping. Um, get that, and then uh, equals four. Oh, that's much faster, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, well, I just uh, that's the same one as before. Didn't we emulate that? Uh, our mass. Ooh. Oh, uh, yeah. Fix that for next time. Uh, but then TTX uh, skip and nothing. <laughs> that did not actually help. Unfortunately. At least the patching works, though. So I might be messing something up anyway. Okay, so... Um, I don't even know if the issue is those undefined instructions anyway. So I think at this point it's clear that I need to hook vbar EL1. and see what the actual problem is. And uh, the sanest way of doing that. See, I'm kind of wondering if I can, if I can just cheat a little bit. Let me look at what uh, Mac OS actually does here for a second. Uh, obviously, we have the source code for this. So I think the patching should have worked. 
Uh, but I mean, we don't even know if those are the instructions that are faulting anyway, and that which is why we're hanging. So that's not useful anyway. Uh, but I think the patching worked because like Mako is calling that, so it should have worked. And ran some code anyway, so. Uh. So let's see. For I'm thinking of an idea here. It depends on what Xenu does with VBAR. Um, sorry, how they have that in there. Oh, it says on reset both are vary one and vary one point here. That's interesting. That's actually I didn't know that. Yeah. So the, these infinite loops might be what we are hitting, right? So if what they always do is branches, then I can just patch them and emulate them. Um, well, let's just hook that and disassemble it and see what it actually does. Now, where are the exception vectors, though? Uh, it was like uh, low core or something like that. Uh, yeah, this this is the thing. Exception vectors base. They are just branches. I think. Oh no, they're probably um, yeah, it's gonna be a macro for a a thing, right? Yeah, it's it's gonna be like a load. Oh, the first thing it does is load TPIDR or something. Oh, interesting. Actually, I'm thinking that, uh, but it's not going to be mapped executable. Because I'm thinking I can just stuff something in the uh, kernel data. Probably just patch it.
I also could try to using the debug functionality to set up like a breakpoint at the uh, at the vector table or something like that. Because I'm eventually going to want to be able to support single stepping, so maybe it's worth taking a quick look at that. See how easy it is to enable uh, the debug stuff. The debug traps are configurable, who gets them? TDE, this is the thing, right? This trap debug exceptions. Well, since we're failing right now, let's just be let's just do brute force a forward on B bar, which means uh, I need to trap V bar right, and that is a thing. Read right trap, yeah. Uh, find read right trap register. I know this is a thing. Where was this? Yes, not reads, right it's here. V barrier one, okay. Uh, yeah, eventually I also want to have that because I need to be able to get interrupts um, so I can break uh, execution. So I will eventually have some kind of periodic trap thing or uh, interrupt or something. There's so many things to do, right? <laughs> um, but for now, I just want to see the damn thing start to boot. So uh, where am I? Here in it. That's bit 38. Uh, HF GWTR L2. So let's do that. 
And I can pretty much do this in an ugly, evil way. My, well, not even evil, evil, it's just manually. Um, so let's see what happens here. And let's turn off the, I did turn off that. Yep. What happened? Is that not implemented? HFGTW. Who? Oh shit! I find this needs another. This needs a feature that we probably don't have. Damn it! Damn it! <sighs> Where is that? Uh, FGT 56. Yep, it's not there. God damn it. Only we had nested virtualization, that'd be so great. Uh... Oh, yeah, the IP. I didn't know we had this. I'm using the translation thing. Um... Three zero twelve. Okay, hold on. Three zero twelve zero zero. No, this is in the eleven. Coproc Oh, 32, sorry. This is for AR32. That's why I'm confused. Um, that's not useful. There's nothing here for that, is there?
I really hate how ARM just didn't make it possible to catch undefined in, like instructions. Like that would have been so useful in non nested virtualization mode. Nah. I'm just going to do that for now. Might be useful, or it might not. Yeah, th this is what tells that there's no way to trap it. <sighs> yep. Those are the only ways. And we don't have any of them. Okay, so the hacky thing here is to just check that on every exception, and hopefully uh, after write to v barrel one we get some other trap before uh, it actually crashes. And it, you know, there's going to be a window, but it's better than nothing. Uh, so at least let's do that. And see how that progresses as we get exceptions. And yeah, the patching approach kind of works, but uh, but the thing is, the patching approach only works. Uh, I mean, I could do it to patch the exception vectors, yeah, but which is what I'm doing in, at runtime, um, and those should never vary. So as long as I get some trap before the problem, then it's fine. Blech. Oh, uh, yeah, the feature thing is broken. That is sad. Oh, I'm still patching, apparently. 
<laughs> Basically, check VBAR every trap. Uh, that was the continue thing, because I just enabled that. Yeah, okay, so VBAR yield one is basically known uh, pretty early on. So, yeah, so first it has some value in physical memory, uh, and then it switches to virtual memory. So basically what I'm going to do is... Save it, and then if e bar el one And then I need to translate. What was the function for that? HV translate stage both. Um, wait, do I have that right? Yeah, I need both. So false, false should do it. And uh, then if I remember correctly, the offsets, uh, HVLC, HVI, sorry. Uh, yeah, so like lower ex um, execution levels. Sorry, what was it? <laughs> uh, current EL0, ELX is that one, lower exception level, AR64, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is, these are the, um, the ones I like, care about. Uh, so I care about, well, I care about all of them, to be honest, because I care about all of them because, um, it might be EL0 when running one of these instructions, though hopefully it won't happen very often. Um, AMX should be fine to enable anyway, so. Yeah, let's just do current exception level for now. And with SPELX, hopefully. So let's just do this one, uh, which is 200. Then disassemble that. I should really make a wrapper for this.
And I need to, actually, I need to uh, flush the instruction cache on that. Those physically indexed? Actually, not sure if that's going to work, but, uh, well, let's try it, even though it's matching the caches. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully we hit it anyway. It's actually kind of cold in here. Okay, let's try that. Woo! I broke that. Oh, nine, I, I forgot the, uh, yeah, that's, uh, the size here is not nine. It's, uh, that's that. And then after that, it, uh, faulted Y. Oh, uh, actually, no, it's just that. Yeah, yeah, it's going to the cache. That's why I said I had to flush it, but, um, uh, but like the, the instruction cache and the data cache are different is the issue. Uh, yeah. But I should at least flush the data cache. Do you think it's unmature about the invalidation for the instruction cache? Uh, let me do that anyway. Okay, that's what? Oh, Python H uh, P write thirty-two. Uh I should have used exit, not quit. <laughs> uh Okay. Oh, data transfer failed? Oh, wait, new vbar address zero. Oh, yeah, well, zero will break. Yeah, okay, if it's not zero, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's before it's actually said, so. I don't think think this will work, but we'll try it without a chain load.
Uh, huh? Oh, translation failed, actually. Hold on. Why? That is interesting. Is it because the MMU is not enabled yet? Could be. Yeah, it's probably just because the MMU is not enabled yet. Uh, well, I can just do... Uh... I'm actually not sure if that's sane, but... Uh... Uh, yeah, let's just check the um, TCR EL12. Not TCR, it was a... Uh, was it TCR? No, it was a uh, SCR. SCTLR E1, sorry. SCTLR E1. Yeah, M. That does work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I can I can see it right there. It's not uh, it's not enabled yet. Yeah, the thing is, I'm not sure if translate worked. The thing is, I wasn't sure if um, if the MMU is disabled, the translation instructions would still work and just not translate. Um, or if I needed to manually check if the MMU is disabled, then, uh, you know, just don't do the translation. So it would have been reasonable for the translation instructions to just pass through stage one if the MMU is disabled. Okay, what now? Again? That's not right, that's not translated. Is it getting set before the translation is enabled? It might. So it did work this time around. Yeah, and then it gets set, but its translation is still disabled. So that's the issue. Um... Okay, let's just kind of cheat here. 
I don't know if the if that's gonna fail because the page tables won't be set yet, but let's find out. Well, the thing is, uh, it might still translate even if the MMU is disabled. So let's see what happens. Otherwise, I'll just wait until the MMU is enabled before doing it. So let's see what happens if it translates. Ah, we're back to that. Cool. Uh, and then something else failed. MRS. Oh, yeah. That, that's a bug here. And no exception. <laughs> uh Okay, so hold on. Oh no, translation failed. Okay, yeah, so so indeed it doesn't work. Um, okay, so in that case, I'm just going to wait until that happens. Well, the virtual address has known it's a fixed offset, so you don't need that to. Ooh. And we're still not getting any HVCs, uh, but did we get the V bar? No. Hold on. Is translation really not enabled yet? Oh, that sucks. Oh, that really sucks. Oh, that's really annoying. They obviously don't expect to handle exceptions during this window. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> what I'm going to do is... First of all, move that here because I'm just confusing myself at this point. Uh, let's do everything in that. Okay, so. Evar is read it. I just need to set next to Evar. If it's not equal to Evar 1. If it is equal to everyone that everything is set and we can return. However, 
Uh, otherwise... If it's one to translate, if it's zero, translation failed, return. So then what I'm going to do is, vbar is that, uh, actually. We have that from before, so actually do do it like this. Restore the old one, which we have patched. I don't think we can trap when translation is enabled. But the thing is, it has to update the uh, vbar at that point anyway, right? Um, I mean, as, as, as long as we get some other trap after that, it should work. I don't think we can trap on uh, SCTLR. Oh, you can actually. Yeah, we can. We can TRVMT. Is there a T right VM? Oh, is it only reads? A TVM, yeah. We can actually. Uh, we can TVM bit 26. Yeah, let's do that, because why not? Trap all the things. Uh, in it. Twenty-six. 
26. And uh, then... Yeah. But we still need to leave um, the old V-bar, though. So we still need the current hack. It's just that the current hack will be consistent now. Uh, as soon as this, as long as this happens after the handling, which means actually um, I want to call that in handle MSR instead. Okay. One V bar. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, initialize that. And, uh, I think we can skip that one probably. 361510, was that? Yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 the maps, the freaking maps. Of course that breaks. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm going to put it here so that if I mess something up, it'll crash before having to wait this long. Okay, did have them all. Okay, and it still fails. 
Uh, there we get the V bar. Without oh, interesting. Interesting. So we get without translation enabled a bunch of times. Then uh, it enables translation, and then it still fails. Then the next one, finally, it works. But that's interesting, because this is like D200. It's a different. Oh, no, it is, uh, yeah, 150, 191, D200. Yeah. It is a different thing, yeah. And uh, still no uh, no traps, so maybe it's another exception vector. Let's just trap all of them. It's every 16, right? Uh, every 80, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. I hope I got the hypervisor call instruction correct. Uh, D42, yeah. Yeah. Looping waiting on what registers, though? Nope, still nothing. Unless it's like panicking on. Uh... Actually, I haven't looked at the screen recently. <laughs> I think there was nothing though. Okay, let me just test the hypervisor called uh, hack just to make sure that I'm not completely uh, messing this up. Uh, the first time it should be physical, so I can kind of just uh, if, uh, the patch thing is such exception handling. 
So if I just do uh, self.ctx.elr, not ELR, it's just ELR. Which should work for the um, for the initial physical one anyway. Yeah. Okay. So the hypervisor call idea works. At least the, the hoax works. So and uh what if instead of doing that I do what if instead of uh, triggering that what I do is a write to ELR, which is probably physical at this point, uh, it is, so hopefully that just works, of an undefined instruction, and then flush it. This is just a quick test. Yeah, we're assuming there's an exception, which there might not be. Um, and then that would be a good uh, excuse to implement like a, um, I'll say it, uh, like breakpoints, basically, like uh, breaking from the uh, from Python. Um, but I'm just gonna at least test that this is actually working first. Uh, no, that's, yeah, that is correct. And then I should have gotten, this should be, uh, an undefined instruction, which means, um, that should be zero. Yeah, exactly. So this does work. The idea works. So it's not an exception, which is, yeah, okay. Indeed, this is uh, very interesting. Uh, then what the heck is it doing? Okay, well, it's too early for timers, which means I can totally uh, trap interrupts, which I eventually need to anyway. Um, and what I'm going to do... Uh, I already have some of those here, actually. In VM, it sets defaults to trapping uh, AMO. I need FMO, which is bit three. I can do both FMO and IMO. FMO is three. IMO is four, I think. Yep. Dun, 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 dun. And uh, then
Then we turn on exceptions. Uh, oh, though, if a guest nukes them... No, but it should still work. Uh, as long as FMO is enabled, it's serial to... Uh, it has to do with DAF, but I think... Yeah, current exception level only, yeah. Okay, so it can't be masked in this case, so it should always arrive. Which is what I want. Uh, so... Uh, so this is not actually useful because it's always going to happen. So all I need to do is set the TVAL. Or it's frequency. And then set control to one. And how many seconds do we give it? Five seconds? Sounds about good, good enough. Oh, uh, it's gonna fail. Self, you. Eh? Eh? What just happened? Service? What? Oh, FIQ, sorry. Why? Should be in five seconds.
Hold on. Why is the guest getting FIQs already? Is it using the IPC stuff? No, it's not using those things yet. Do we have FIQs pending? Hold on. I mean, now it's triggered, of course, but... Yeah, wait, why? Oh, whoa, 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 P and V, I'm dumb. I turned on the timer and then a different, yeah, sorry. Uh, can I fix this? Yeah, I think I can fix this without rebooting. Um, Cunt v0, and then I do just this, basically. Let's copy and paste. Uh, but let's give it 15 seconds. Let's see. Am I going to get the interrupt? No. It's been 15 seconds. Come on. What? Oh, wait, uh, was there a mask bit I needed to... Uh, do I have that right? I might not have that right. No, it needs to be one, so it is correct. Hmm. Hmm. Let's use count V, because at least we know that one did work a second ago. Uh... See, the other option is that my hypervisor is dying. It's not that... Um, it's not that it's... Uh, that the guest is dying, it's that the hypervisor is dying. That's entirely possible. Well, I am giving the hype the uh, kernel access to like all hardware, so it can definitely do something to screw up the hypervisor, like power gate my USB or something. I mean, I removed the USB thing from the device tree, but uh, like, there's power manager and stuff in there. Okay, so in that case, let's uh, nuke all hardware because it really shouldn't be using much hardware this early on in the uh, in the story. So how about I just don't map any MMIO? You get no hardware. And I can just start mapping things as I see it touching them interactively. Well, let's see what the frame buffer does too, by the way. Uh, it just gets the apple. Huh. And not even that. I just, Mapping no hardware still doesn't 
Okay, that's even more interesting now. How is it breaking me? That is weird. There's definitely something dumb that I'm doing. I mean, I don't care if they have a wait for X to come up loop. The point is I'm setting up a timer that should be firing, and it's not, which sounds like the hypervisor is dead. Uh, but why? <laughs> I mean, I know it's a pretty dumb hypervisor. I'm sure I have vulnerabilities in here, but still. Um, also, I am mapping all of RAM. So if it decides to like just clobber my memory, it totally can do that. Uh, so let's not do that. Instead, let's map only the RAM that it's allowed to use. I, this has been tested on something things better than Mac OS. This runs Linux. <laughs> That's the fun part. Is this already runs Linux fine? Unless I broke something in the last, you know, things I've been changing, but at least it used to run Linux. <laughs> uh, ah, L2 offset bit zero. What is FIS base? Is FIS base? Oh no, it's definitely aligned. Mem size. Okay, something's broken in my map. Ping. Yeah, okay. This is a bug in the hypervisor, which is good that I found. Can I map this mem size? Mem top is this space this TVA mem size. Uh, Let's do it here so at least it dies early so I can debug this easier. Uh... I'm not surprised my VM code has bugs. <laughs> So uh, that uh, let's enable full debug for this, which is going to be hilarious. Eh. It's not even TBA. This should be... Oh, wait, hold on. This is part of the issue, isn't it? Should it be... Uh, that's probably part of why this doesn't work more than once.
Yeah, this is all kind of broken now. Uh, TBA. The trees, ADT base minus fist base plus TBA vert base. That's fine. Yeah, it makes sense. Hypervisor exit should pretty much always, uh, well, now that I have the debug turned on, it'll print something anyway. Okay, there we go. That's our ascension failed. And only that. Okay, hold on. I mean, this is about going to fix anyways, so. One twenty nine. Uh, yeah, obviously this is not correct. Why chunk align down? Oh, there's the bug. There's the bug. Probably don't need the debug at this point. It's pretty obvious. If nothing else is broken. <laughs> well, the point is, I'm just making it so they can't overwrite the hypervisor anymore by not mapping it, so... At least, unless they use the DMA or something. Four, five... No... That is very interesting. Okay, so. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, in the exception handler, before it calls HV exit, I'm going to set up a timer, but for like, but for like nothing. <laughs> And just to see if it stops firing at some point. Well, 10, 10 milliseconds might work. Let's do 50 milliseconds. Okay, that didn't work either. Is it because it never fired because too much stuff was happening? I set it for like nothing. That should fire. Well, I mean, it should elapse. Uh, like, I'm doing it on every exception, right? Okay. Uh... Guest exception, if I queue, yeah. Can't. Can't. Uh, 
Is this actually doing anything? No. Because this is too short, it, it always fails. Um, okay, let's try five milliseconds. Oh, I forgot to exit, damn it. Uh, let's try chain, let's see. No, that won't work. Let's try it anyway, see what happens. Okay. Interesting. That caught it in the pointer authentication instruction. So obviously this works. Uh, we got a bunch of uh, cont. Yeah, definitely breaking something because at some point it stops faulting. How does it do that? Anyway, it's getting late and I need to get some dinner. And uh, probably thinking about this for a while is also a good idea anyway. So I'll be signing up for now and also take the time to upgrade macOS and do this with the most recent version, which I should have been doing anyway. Uh, and probably be back tomorrow with more. So. See you. I can't just type C instead of cont because this is my debugger and I know it's only cont, not C. <laughs> I wrote this debugger. Anyway, see you all.